Well, happy were you, man. I know you had to be ecstatic that uh, Isaiah's coming back. But just what, what all does he add back to this team, and especially in the, you know with the versatility you've added? Dudley, I love the palm trees in the back. Socially distant from everybody on the beach here. What beach? <laughs> it's uh, the Dawson Beach in Springdale. <laughs> Looks awesome. Uh, yeah, no, I think, you know, we're all really excited to have Isaiah back. I know it's, it's always a tough, uh, you know, it's a tough decision for guys uh, that are in that position. Uh, but we're extremely excited to have him back without a question of a doubt. And, and uh, you know, now just looking forward to, to working with him and, and uh, getting him ready to have an incredibly career year. Ellie, you good? Yes. Okay. Bob? Uh, hey, hey, Eric. How you doing? Good. What's up, Bob? Um, I'm good. Uh, hey, uh, uh, Isaiah said, I guess he told you in person the week ago Saturday. Um, when he came in, did you know he was going to tell you his decision? And were you surprised or just, I mean, how, how did you yeah, react? Yeah, when we had our, our conversation, I actually was surprised. Um, you know, I think that he went through a period where um, – you know, he had a goal in mind and, and, and maybe it kind of seemed like he was going to come back. And then I think that there became more and more interest, more interviews. And then maybe he was leaning towards um, taking the NBA route. And then at the very end, um, you know, he, he came back around to, you know, thinking that, that this was going to be uh, the best decision for him. So, and, and when he told me, I, you know, like I asked him two or three times, you know, are you sure? Um, you know, is this really what you're going to do? Are you excited about it? Um, and he, and he was excited and he, he, you know, he, he, he had zero reservation in his voice. Um, you know, when we discussed it. And is, is today going to be the first time he practices with you guys? And if so, kind of, well, what's that going to be like having him at practice? Yeah. You know, we just finished practice. Um, he went through some of the drills, some of the drills he didn't go through. Um, but yeah, we had, a, we had a good practice today and, um, it's awesome to have him back. He understands all our terminology. Um, he does everything the right way. Um, so it, it was, it was really good to have him back. Okay. I, I, I'll pass the baton, but if, if you got a chance to come back, I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> As always, Bob, uh, Curtis. Hey coach. Obviously, you know, having a guy like Isaiah back in the mix, is that's, that's a big deal. That's exciting. But you know what he brings to the table at this point. So I'm just curious, with the last two weeks of practice without Isaiah on the floor, have you guys found that somewhat beneficial in terms of being able to evaluate all the new faces that you have? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just been a, you know, it's been a short, you know, four-hour last, you know, last two weeks. And, and we're talking about things like roster development, um, you know, trying to come up with what our uh, philosophical identity will be. Um, you know, I think with him not, you know, being a part of those first two weeks, maybe we're fast tracking some guys at, at certain positions, which will be good for them. Uh, but we got a lot of guys learning the system, learning the playbook. Um, you know, so, but it's, you know, I mean, I think from a, from a, an evaluation standpoint, we We've got to get creative with how we evaluate just because of the landscape of, of, of uh, you know, the COVID-19 and, and uh, you know, but right now we're just trying, like, how do we, you know, quote unquote roster development is, is really what we're trying to do right now. And um, I think the guys are excited too, uh, to have Isaiah back. I imagine they are. With, with Isaiah back in the mix, you know, adding a shooter with his capabilities, you take a look at the roster and it seems like you have a pretty deep assortment of perimeter shooting threats. Have you ever had a roster that you remember coaching in the past where you could put all five guys on the floor who are capable three-point shooters without giving up size? Yeah, you know, I, I would, you know, our, our, our team at Nevada that went to the Sweet 16 was built a little bit like this because of 
you know, Kendall Stevens was such a great shooter and the Martin twins obviously could really shoot. And those three guys were all six, seven, um, and gave us, you know, really, really good versatility. And then Jordan Caroline was a, was a guy that could play inside out at six, seven. So, um, we've kind of, you know, have had a team in the past where we could put five shooters out there, but every team's got their own identity. Um, you know, certainly Isaiah, you know, changed the landscape of, of, of who we are, um, what our identity can look like. Um, you know, and I do think for sure, Curtis, that we do have some, some roster flexibility for how we want to play. Um, you know, but so do, you know, other team, you know, other teams in, in the SEC have, 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 you know, they got players that have tested the waters. And um, as I was walking in, I saw Alabama got, you know, Petty back. And so, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, there's, there's, it's talented league for sure. Thanks so much, coach. Tom. Yeah. Hey, Eric. In so, terms yeah. of uh, a guy like Isaiah comes back, he has specific things he wants to get better at. Uh, he, he's sharp enough to know that. What, what would you say he needs to show improvement on this season? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, number one is just, uh, you know, his overall body development with, comes with age and, and continuing to work in the weight room, continue to, uh, you know, from a nutritional standpoint to try to add body weight to his frame. Um, and I think that alone will significantly help him um, because that's, that's really important at the next level. Um, and, and, and I know that he's committed to, you know, not that he hasn't been in the past, but I, he, you know, I think he's excited about the weight room. I think he's excited about nutrition. Um, you know, and, and he's such a great shooter. We never wanted to take away from that, but, you know, I think drawing fouls, uh, adding free throws attempted to his game and, and, and continue to evolve as a ball handler. I think those are things that, that he's looking forward to. And, um, you know, so I, I mean, I think that every player, you know, until you hit about 30 years old, you, you know, you constantly want to evolve and try to get better. You know, throughout this crisis, there's been no real certainties about how things are going to progress. What's your thoughts about being able to put fans in the stands when basketball comes back around? Yeah, I mean, I just, I'm just, you know, really glad the NBA is playing. You know, there's no fans, but um, it's awesome to, to, to tonight. I'm going to go home and watch NBA basketball. I'm going to turn on the MLB and see baseball games, and the WNBA is playing, and the basketball tournament finished their tournament start to finish. And so there's, there's been a lot of real positivity that's happened uh, during this pandemic that, that um, in my opinion is not talked enough about because there, there are some things that are happening where guys are competing and, and, um, and we're able to have sports. And um, I just, you know, hopeful for, for SEC football. Um, whether there's fans or whatever that situation ends up being, um, you know, and I think we'll worry about basketball fans after we figure out what's happening with football. We certainly uh, hope that Coach Pittman and his group gets to gets to play games, and and I think we're optimistic and hopeful that that'll happen. But as far as what happens with us and fans, I think that's you know down the road, um, and really no reason to speculate as things kind of twist and turn on a daily basis. Thanks, Moss. Thanks, Tom. Kevin? Hey, Moss. What's up, Kevin? Hey, Isaiah Joe, last year you, you coached an SEC Player of the Year in Mason Jones. Do you see Isaiah Joe as a guy that comes in preseason, deserving of some talk for SEC Preseason Player of the Year? And if you do, can you talk about some of the tangibles and maybe intangibles that would go into him being that kind of guy for you in year two? Yeah, Kevin, I certainly certainly feel like he um, has got to be mentioned as a preseason type um, player of the year. And, and um, you know, you look at what he's done. I mean, he's, you know, there's, there's, there's you, you look at freshman, sophomore seasons, and, and, and he's had two great years as a really – young player. I mean, there's going to be other players in our league that'll be going into their junior and senior year. Um, obviously he's going into his junior year 
there, and I think he's been a, a, a guy that's proven he's an all-league first-team guy, even his first two years in college. And um, he does a lot of intangible things. Obviously, everybody talks about the shooting and how he spaces the floor. And, um, you know, for us, speed and space is a, is a term that we've used. With our, with our team from an offensive standpoint. And he's going to really help in that speed and space game. Um, but, yeah, I think there's no doubt he's worthy and should be um, a guy talked about um, when you talk about the top players in our league. I don't think there's any doubt in that. Follow-up question here. Recruiting so big, and obviously you've had a great year, top five national class high school, top ten transfer. Should we look at decisions like this and the work that a staff has to do to balance, giving players good information that might help them decide to leave, but also showing them the importance of maybe coming back? That's recruiting too, right? I mean, is this like winning a five-star recruit? And how tough is it to kind of be in the middle on that fence with pros and cons as whether or not he should stay or go? Yeah, I think that's just kind of, you know, it depends on the, on the player really, Kevin, on how involved. Uh, certainly we uh, tried to provide – um, Isaiah and his father as much information as we possibly can. Um, we also tried to help facilitate any calls that we might have gotten uh, to help facilitate Zoom interviews. Um, and, and I think the bottom line is when you lose, like I've been in the NBA, I know how great it is. I know how great the lifestyle is. I know the level of play. Um, that's the dream of any basketball player. So as a coach, or a coaching staff or administration, you want to do everything you possibly can to try to help that player reach his goal as quickly as he can, but also to put himself in a position where he can have a career at that level. And, and um, so you discuss pros and cons and, and if asked, you, 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 you kind of give an opinion on what you think might be best and, um, you know, I think it varies from player to player or family to family how involved a coach at the collegiate level will be in, in this. But, um, you know, Isaiah and Derek, were his father, were very thorough throughout the process. They took their time, which they certainly should because it's a monumental decision. Um, and you're really myself, the trainer, the – strength coach, the assistant coaches, support staff. We're just here to um, try to support Isaiah throughout the process. And I hope that he feels like, you know, we, we, we kind of went, you know, did it the right way. But I would not say, Kevin, that we recruited him. Um, that's the last thing that I would ever want to do with a player is to try to recruit him back um, if he's trying to pursue an NBA dream, I want to just provide the pertinent, pertinent information that's based on facts from phone calls and people that you trust and have longstanding relationships with, and then let the player and his family make the proper decision. Now, getting him back, does it feel like we got a star back? Unequivocally, yes. There's no question about that. But I don't really look at it from a, you know, quote unquote recruiting standpoint, because, you know, I don't believe in trying to, you know, recruit somebody away from what they really want to do. And, and we know, like I know right now, Isaiah wants to play in the NBA. He's part of the Arkansas Razorbacks right now, but he has a goal and dream to play in the NBA. And so, you know, we want to try to help him in practice behind closed doors uh, to work on skill development, to put himself in the best position to be as high a draft pick as he possibly can a year from now. Thanks, Mus. Thanks, Kev. Hayden. Hey, thanks, Kyle. Uh, Coach, um, just Isaiah kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier, but he just talked about the pride and uh, how much uh, of a privilege it is to play for the state you grew up in and were raised in. And I was just kind of wondering um, how much you think that led to his decision coming back. And also, he said he was on the practice floor a little bit today. Uh, he's played with so many of these guys that are from Arkansas and AAU and against him in high school. Just the camaraderie and the conversations and, and the fun they have sort of playing beside each other and then maybe running drills with each other once again. Yeah, I mean, I think the guys are, like I mentioned earlier, I think they're really excited to have him back. I know that it was really important for him to tell the guys himself. And, um, 
you know, so, um, and then there's obviously familiarity with those guys, both on the floor and off the floor from a bonding standpoint. And, and I don't think there's any doubt that, you know, the Razorbacks and the University of Arkansas mean a lot to Isaiah. There's no question about that. But I also think that he kind of tried to um, separate that, kind of make the best business decision uh, that he thought would help his career both short term and long term. Um, and I think he and his family did an incredible job of kind of removing all emotions from the decision. Gotcha. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, Scott. All right, we got a uh, time for a few more. Trey, Biddy. Hey, Coach. How you doing? Good. Good. How are you, Trey? So, recruiting, you guys are well known for throwing stuff against the wall, coming up with creative ideas, branching off all that stuff. How difficult is that right now with, you know, lean limited to Zoom meetings and virtual tours and stuff? And have you come up with anything that's that's kind of off the wall? <laughs> I mean, we probably have, but we're, we don't want to share anything that, that's not already out there, Trey. But um, I tell our staff every single day, whether it's, the text that they wake up to in the morning, or whether it's talking with administration, uh, whether it's talking with sports information department, like there's no excuse right now to not be as good a recruiters as, as anyone in the country. I don't mean like, like top 10, but I mean just from a recruiting standpoint, because right now everybody's equal. Like, you know, how quickly can you put together um, virtual presentations? How creative are you getting in your virtual presentations? How much are you changing the virtual presentations? Are you creating new ones on a weekly basis? Um, how do you not become stale? Um, you know, because to just go say, hey, we're going we're gonna to do a, a virtual tour of campus and you're only going to do one of them, well, guess what? Somebody else is doing two and three. So, um, but on the recruiting aspect, I mean, the, the landscape has changed and it's probably changed um, – it's never going to look the same. I don't think, I think that this virtual stuff is, is going to stick around. Um, and I think that's a good thing. Cause I think you can kind of educate people a little bit more on your program. Um, than maybe just waiting for a visit. I think maybe you can find out what's real and not real even before an official visit on campus. Um, and then there's always the evaluation piece that's, that right now has changed. You know, we, we can't read body language and, and um, you know, you're, 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 you're evaluating on live stream and so forth. And so um, we're going to be extremely patient uh, in recruiting uh, this class and make, you know, try to eliminate as many mistakes as, 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 as possible. And there's, you know, whether it's an NBA draft, a major league baseball draft, an NFL draft, college recruiting, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to bat a thousand. Um, nobody does in any sport. And so you just try to, you know, do it as best you can from an evaluation standpoint and gather as much information. And right now it's really hard and ch challenging to, to get a lot of information. And so we're going to be a little bit you know, slower, um, you know, maybe than in the past as, as, as far as how we go about things moving forward. And with the roster right now, with how it's comprised with four freshmen, three returners, um, we got three sit ones with uh, Abiyami out, I guess, um, and then the three grad transfers. Is this your wheelhouse? Is this kind of what we can expect from a Eric Musselman type of roster pulling from, from every angle like that? Well, I mean, I think right now when you look at, you know, let's just start with transfers. When you look at the number of transfers in any sport, um, the landscape has changed. And you can either do things the way they used to be, or you can evolve with what's going on uh, in current society. And so that's what we've tried to do. I think, you, you know, like this year's roster has a nice blend and a nice mix um, certainly, I think from from you know I don't we don't know what the landscape's going to be like moving forward, um, you know regarding transfers and so on, and so uh, 
you know, I, I guess I really can't answer that, Trey. I think that what we are trying to do is, is uh, have a team um, that, that can win, uh, have a program that can graduate guys as a program where guys experience at the college level is what it should be, which should be the best time of their lives. So that's, I mean, that's what we're trying to do throughout this process. And, you know, the feedback that we've gotten from the grad transfers right now, as far as new players that have played, you know, elsewhere, really, really, really positive feedback in a, in a short amount of time on their experience, whether it's in practice or, or, or living in Northwest Arkansas, whatever it may be, um, really positive feedback so far. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Nikki? Hey, Coach. Hey, um, fans' expectations have just skyrocketed since Isaiah Joe announced his news. How much have your expectations grown since that? And is it kind of where you expect this program to be every year preseason, you know, in the top 25 discussion? Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, like no one's going to put more expectations on anything than I will internally. Um, you know, last year, you know, my expectations going into every game were try to win every game. And, and the games that we didn't win, um, I was devastated, you know, but, but, but I do think that they played as hard as they could. And certainly right now we have a, a roster that we feel is deeper, more talented um, than last year's roster. And, and I think the guys that, that were here last year and are here now would say the same thing. Um, you know, even Mason, uh, Mason was, was at a practice last week. Um, and, and, and he thought that, you know, the makeup of the roster and again, the, you know, right now, what we are is we're a team with potential. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors like chemistry, um, accepting roles, sharing the basketball, rotating on defense when you're supposed to getting loose balls. Um, playing hard, all those things, I don't know how they're going to go. Um, but I, you know, like I knew that if, if we had a good roster, that the expectations at Arkansas, I knew what they were going to be like because we have incredible fans that got a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, and they want to win. And so um, I knew that there would be expectations, and certainly with Isaiah coming back, <laughs> those expectations, expectations got even more so which is cool like you know bring it on and then we got to try to put it together as best we can thank you it's, it's better nikki than the other way when there's no expectations definitely <laughs> agree all right troy why don't you wrap us up here yeah for sure uh coach pleasure to meet you um and uh yeah for my for my question um i mean you've only been here about you know, a season. Um, how nice is it to have somebody who's already had success with your system uh, to come back and almost help all the new freshmen and new players um, implement your system for year two? Yeah, no, Troy, it's nice meeting you. And I think certainly, you know, Isaiah is going to be like, a, he's going to be a stabilizing influence. Like, you know, when you're in a game and you're on a roller coaster and the game's going like this and there's runs, like who do you look to as a coach? Who do your teammates look to? And, and Isaiah is kind of like that stabilizing guy that never got on the roller coaster. He's kind of, you know, comes at you with this methodical pace. And all of us, me included, you know, rely on somebody like Isaiah. All right, let's look at him. He's got, you know, everything together. He's going to, you know, hit a big shot when we need it. He's going to take a charge when we need it. Uh, he's going to have that defensive rotation when we need it. Um, and then when he's not in the game, he's always a guy on the bench that's seeing the game, can discuss what's going on with teammates. And certainly, you know, even the last two weeks when he was still going through the NBA process, when he was at practice, he was an awesome uh, buddy coaching on the side. I mean, it's a phrase we use to buddy coach and help your teammates out and get them in the right spots and drills and, and he's been an extra coach for us when he's been around um, and not doing NBA Zoom stuff. So um, certainly in the, during the course of the season, Troy, 
he's going to be somebody that we that we rely on uh, for so many things, not just getting us buckets, but but to be a stabilizing influence who's proven player in this system. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Yeah, thanks. All right. Last one, Nate. Go ahead. Um. Nate, you're on mute. On mute, damn it. There you go. <laughs> you, went back back on. To mute. you went back to mute, Nate. Damn it. How about right, now? Nate. Now you're, you're good. good. Okay, go. let me get it while I can. As far as on defense, what does it mean to have him back? And also just having your best shooter be the first to take a charge. How much does that help the team? No, I think uh, – I, I think – Nate, when somebody's willing to lay their body on the line, number one, it means they're in their proper defensive position off the ball. You know, I think that's, you know, something that we talk to our team about. Like, you can't take a charge if you're out of help defense. And so what, when you have a player that's a high take a charge guy, like Isaiah, well, guess what? That means he's a great off ball defender and he's in the right spot defensively to be a help guy. Otherwise, those charges turn into blocking calls. And so um, he's, you know, I think that's contagious. When a guy does that, um, we call it when you're on the weak side to be on the blue line, a hockey term, not to be off hugging your man. And Isaiah does as good a job being on the blue line as anybody I've coached, meaning he's willing to err on the side of being an overly help player as instead of being a selfish defender where he's only worried about his man. Um, and that's why you see such a high volume of taking charges uh, in his short two-year career here. But I think he all of a sudden made us a better help defensive team as well when he made his decision to come back. Thanks. Thanks, Nate. All right, Moss. Appreciate your time. Kyle. We'll, uh, we'll let you get to it. Thanks, bro. See you guys. All right, man.